Welcome to Let's Play Battlefield 1942. On today's episode we have Operation Market Garden for the second time. And on today's episode we will be playing for the German team. As you may recall from the previous Operation Market Garden video, uh, contrary to history, it's the German side that really has to control uh, the bridge or capture the bridge in order to maintain uh, any chance of attacking the flags on this map. Generally speaking, the American side captures the church flag very quickly. They just parachute in there and then within moments they'll take one or two additional flags. The German side really has to rush forward to be able to get any of the flags, although usually they'll get one or maybe two before the real action begins. Looks like the American air power is getting an early start. The four blue ovals underneath the radar show that the American side has captured all four flags straight off, and the Germans haven't even crossed the bridges yet. And it looks like they've also managed to put up a defense, at least here at the Stone Bridge flag. Those are landmines on the bridge. I can't drive the tank over those without getting uh, instantly killed. It is possible sometimes to very, very, very slowly drive over the landmines without detonating them, but it's pretty risky. I've got one infantry in there. Alright, now I've been bombed, but it looked like the guy in there had a pretty good shot at capturing that flag. But there's got to be at least one other defender over there. So it looks like I'm going to have to respawn at the main. The axes are basically in a worst case scenario right here at the beginning. We're bleeding tickets, the allies have all the flags, or at the very least we can't spawn at that fourth flag at the stone bridge. So we have to spawn at the main and take our vehicles up and try to get across the bridge. Now that guy just jumped out of my jeep to try to take the stone bridge. I'm going to drive over to the church flag the empty tank vehicle icon indicates that maybe the flag is undefended at the moment, otherwise they would have grabbed the tank. The church flag is definitely the most important flag on this map because it spawns the only two uh, allied tanks. In fact, none of the other three flags on this map will spawn any vehicles of any kind. The Axis are lucky now that they've finally gotten a flag. It may take a while for them to die off and respawn in at that flag, so the Allies still have a chance of counterattacking and reclaiming the German flag before the reinforcements arrive. I'm in kind of a tricky situation here. You normally like to keep your tanks mobile so they don't get attacked and ambushed by bazookas or have engineers throwing landmines at them. On the other hand, we desperately need some flags, and the only way I can even try to get flags is to just roll up to one of the flags and hope that the allies aren't defending it too well. But of course, these flags are very easily defended by at least one allied soldier who's willing to just hide in the corner. And this is especially true because I'm in a tank. The tanks can't just go around through the corners or search buildings. Now it looks like I've got lucky there on that flag because uh, all an allied troop would have to do is sit inside the ruins of one of the buildings and keep that flag neutral. The radar shows that the Germans are really clustering up there at that uh, main bridge. Presumably the allies have set up a whole bunch of landmine defenses. So the allies, for whatever reason, really had their act together at the beginning of this map. The Germans are going to pay for that. seems to be 
an unusually large number of allied bazooka troops. As that guy just proved uh, when he killed me there, the bazookas, while they're not very useful against infantry in a firefight, if they get the drop on you, it's an instant kill. Particularly if uh, you're at close range, they can get you with the bazooka. So whenever you see an enemy bazooka soldier, although a medic with a machine gun is definitely at an advantage in a close quarter combat situation, if you run directly toward him, you'll give him a good uh, angle to hit you with the bazooka. So it's best to kind of run parallel to him, perpendicular, and um, fire it in that way. At least until he's fired off his one bazooka shot. It takes him forever to reload. I guess it's obvious that I'm getting a little impatient here with some of the other German tanks. I haven't really seen them make an effort to rush through the flag, and I didn't see any landmines on the main bridge. Presumably the bazooka soldier there was in a good position to hit me right in the back as I passed by, and that's an instant kill for any light tank. And a heavy tank with some damage is also killed instantly with one tank shot to the rear. And once again the Germans have no flags to spawn at other than the main base. So we've got to spawn at the main and once again we've got to try going over one of the bridges. For the Axis, it's looking really bad at the moment. We're continuing to bleed tickets. But if you play as Axis, and for whatever reason you don't get a good foothold on the other side, you just have to be, you really have to persevere, and you have to be determined and just keep attempting over and over again. And gradually the Allied defenses will start to crumble as they spread their ranks. They aren't as uh, determined to get their landmine defenses set up. The artillery vehicle that I'm in right here is a one-man vehicle that has two slots. Wow, that guy just got a artillery shot to the face, though. That's got to be painful. But at any rate, the artillery are really meant to be used by one person, and you alternate between the driver position and the cannon position. The reason for that is to make it so the person driving the artillery vehicle has an awkward uh, shift between driving and shooting. They don't want to make it as good as a tank. Ah. It's interesting how this allied Sherman here was defending that position, uh, really sitting in an ambush position. On Battlefield 1942, usually don't like to defend, so they kind of go on the attack all the time, but it is useful to set up an ambush. I think on this map, more than most of the others, it, it really shows the Allies, hey, you've got a chance to put up a strong defense here and get kills and win the map. And on this server, I believe this is a server where base camping is not allowed with tanks, so there's no incentive for the Allied tanks to cross the bridge. What I like to do after I cross the bridge is go head straight for the church. Normally they'll have somebody defending the bridges anyway, so you can't capture the flag. And they usually get surprised if you head out all the way over to the church. There's an empty tank icon there, so hopefully I'll be able to grab the tank. And unfortunately there's an allied Sherman there who's defending. So for the moment, uh, we're pretty much stuck here. We've neutralized a bunch of flags and stopped the bleed. But I can't take this flag. I can't kill the Allied tank. And uh, for his part, he can't take the flag either because he can't get inside the church. And even if he tried to go up to one of the openings here, I could just head upstairs and, and be completely safe from him. So we're at a stalemate. And it's just a question of who cares more about holding this flag neutral or trying to capture it. Since I've really got nowhere else to go and he'd probably kill me if I tried to leave, I'm going to be the one to uh, stay here for the moment. And he's probably going to get bored and he's going to have to go defend the bridges. And besides, it's a lot worse for him to tie down that resource, the tank, while I stay here. And he may be moving off. See you in part two.